So always in montage of fractures, we always start with a story because most of the fractures are missed. So eight year old boy, seemingly like a, a borderline forearm fracture managed by a cast. When he comes back at two months, it is this. Here we can see the anterior bowing of the ulna, with the loss of my, the ulna bow is there and we have this anterior uh, type montage of type one. So it was managed by complex surgery around ulna and radius, open reduction of the radius, as well as destruction of the the results are good, but the story goes on again. This time, we have a precarious elbow X-ray here. Fi he presented to me five days later. I took, uh, took him out of the plaster and took proper elbow X-rays. Here again, we have a small uh, plastic deformation in the proximal ulna and we have this anterior montagia. But luckily, because it's five days old, I could do a flexion, hyperflexion, close reduction. He went on to do well. So why we miss these kinds of montages? It has been described as early as 18th century, even before the onset of first X-rays, and Bado type has been described as early as 1954. Because not every time we say these kinds of injuries, we see these subtle injuries with inadequate radiographs, and it's a common thinking that all pediatric fractures remodel well, it's not so. Always in every forearm fracture, you rule out a montage variant. So proper early diagnosis management is important. So, as my previous speakers told, an extension of this BADA classification is a LITS classification. So, it would be very important before planning management because as we closely see, this A, B and C types belong to type A. A is an anterior bend or plastic deformation with a subluxation of the radial head. B is a uh, green stick fracture with a dislocation and this complete fracture. Type D, LITS is corresponding to type 2 of BADO and uh, LITS type E is uh, corresponding to type 3 variant. So let us go for the case example. This is a six-year-old boy presented with this X-ray. There's not much uh, bowing of the ulna, but there is dislocation of the radial head. Three days old, no significant deformity. Whether we plan for a close reduction, because the ulna is almost straight, do we want to do a primary destruction of the ulna because it's an acute injury, or do we open reduction of the radial head? So always classify first, let's type A, bad or type one. So we attempt a close reduction of anesthesia, but here when I try to close it, use around 90 degrees, there is still the it's not transecting well. There's incongruent reduction when you do hyperflexion at around 110 degrees, subsiding the biceps pull, we get the reduction, and the child does well because early pickup, early diagnosis, and early management, especially in that's type A, barrow type one, and uh, supported by literature. So let us understand the basics of type 1 montagia because the planning of management depends upon that. Whenever the injury happens in hyperextension, first the biceps overacts and tries to dislocate the radial head, whereas the subluxation happens and the ulna tries to deform with the weight of the gravity and the complete fracture happens. This is a sequence of events described by Tomkin and most of the times Professor Wilkins in his, uh, in his talks, he always uh, stresses on the hyperextension violence and the mechanism of reduction. So flexion reduces the fracture. This is a six-year-old boy present there. Again, a hyperextension. We, we can see the significant amount of deformity in the proximal ulna. Here we have this classical type, let's type B, better type one montage with a uh, tension failure in the anterior, anterior angulated uh, ulna fracture with a dislocation of the radial head. Again, what is the plan? Because of the hyperextension violence, reduce the ulna give a hyperflexion, three-point pressure of the ulna, you reduce it. Sometimes a hyperflexion is needed if the radial head is sublux. But let us see what was done here. Here, an intramedullary wire was done, but the child went on to do well. But why not conserve in this case? Here, what happens is sometimes when there is proximal portion of the ulna is involved, when we try to hyperflex to make the radial head congruent, there will be excess pull of the triceps and we can gradually have this ulna going for posterior angulation. So to prevent this, especially in the proximal fractures, it is better to stabilize the ulna so that there is no late angulation because of the triceps pull because we need to hyperflex to reduce the radial leg. So this is another case. Here we have the straightforward complete fracture of the ulna, but the pattern of the fracture, we see it's a long oblique type. Let's type C and bad type 1. A close reduction was attempted. Here, almost a congruent reduction. So how many of you will leave this alone? Sir, Ashok, sir. Will you manage it conservatively, accept this, because it's reduced well, congruent radial reduction, the ulna length is maintained? Yeah. 
India. It's an unstable pattern. Lot of multi-centric studies have come up. There were hundred percent they displaced because it's unstable. It's a long oblique pattern. There's high chance of redislocation and displacement. So plan for nailing. Intermediate nailing was done. Almost full pronation the supination was achieved within a few weeks. So what have we learned from this? Type one length unstable fractures have a low threshold for operation. Sometimes, most of the times, we get away with I'm nailing, but sometimes if it's a long oblique or a spiral and a commutative fracture, we need an open reduction and plating. Sometimes, even after reducing the ulna, the radial head may be congruent. Sometimes, we may need to open the radial head some, because of the fact that orbicular ligament can be interposed. Now, we go for the next type here. The eight-year-old boy, we have this plastic deformation of the ulna in the coronal plane under lateral dislocation. Now, again, classifying its bad or type three, let's type E. So, literature says most of these fractures can be managed conservatively. Sometimes, because of over pressure, the high pro proximity of the post interest is now they can develop pin palsy. Here, we tried to close reduce, there was incongruent reduction, we did an INM nailing, child went on to do well with full movements. So, especially in these type of fractures, in type 3, this high chance of proximity of the post interest is now don't try for multiple attempts. If needed, do assistive reductions and fixation. This is a very complex uh, pattern. It's a road traffic accident. We see a lot of edema around the elbow. Let's type B, like, in, like a bad or type 2 equivalent. It's a posterior dislocation of the radial head. It's complete displacement and a proximal ulna fracture. It's a gross swelling with a proximal ulna unstable fracture, a radial head fracture. You can see closely here, there's a distal radius and ulna fracture also, but it's undisplaced. So, extension casting mechanism can be done, but because of the unstability, I tried to reduce it by extension, the radial head popped in, because the injury mechanism was extension type. So, the story doesn't end here. Here we can see there is some synostosis between the proximal radius and ulna. So there's cross union, even if they manage them conservatively, the complex fractures. Now the option is between a synostosis takedown versus a derotation osteotomy. So to remember the importance of complete radiographs, the three parameters which was stressed by Dr. Harish, the radio capital R line, the ulna bow, and the new line which is called as a lateral humeral line, which is a line parallel to the humerus shaft, it has to be in the border tangential to the radial head. If it's transects, it means that the radial is subluxed. And there is high index of suspicion has to be happened whenever there is an ulna fracture. Understand injury pattern and classify. And three golden points as said by Professor Wilkins, correct the angulation, maintain the ulna length and maintain the radial head reduction. So this is a basic management protocol which has been already told to you by Dr. Harish. So most of the type 1 and type 4 may need operation. Mild type 1s A, B may be managed conservatively. Type 2 and 3 are very rare but can be conservative most of the times. So, montage is always a Pandora's box. Early diagnosis and pickup is the key. Acute treatment is the easier part. If missed, always have a guarded prognosis. Have a very low threshold for conservative management. Thank you so much.